Hi guys, it's Rach, and this is a quick word on going again. The other day I went to yoga, and it was the first time I had been to yoga in a few months. My family has been through a lot in the last few months, and just in the chaos of everything and the weight of everything I have gotten out of the practice and I finally was able to go back and when I got back on the mat I immediately felt like my shoulders lowered like I just took a breath and I felt grounded like really grounded for the first time in a while and I'm assuming that you have your version of that thing you have your version of yoga or dance class or hanging out with your friends or just something that you do in your life that makes you feel better that makes you feel like you so we all have our version of that thing and mine was this class and after class my favorite instructor saw me and he was like, oh, Rachel, I'm so glad you made it. How are you? And I was telling him, yes, yeah, the first time I've been able to come in a few months. And he said, oh, it reminds me always of that Rumi quote. And if y'all have never heard it, I would love to tell you about it today. Rumi has this beautiful idea about coming back to practice. And I'm going to butcher the quote. But essentially, he says, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come back to it again, come back again, come back again, come back again to whatever it is that you are working on, that you are working through, come back to the therapy, come back to training for that 5k, come back to the person you know you are, come back even though it's hard. If you've fallen off the wagon a thousand times, jump back on it a thousand and one. It's easier said than done, right? It's easier said than done because if you have given up on a dream, if you have given up on a goal, then it's not just starting with the enthusiasm of that first initial step. You're also probably starting with a fair amount of negative feelings about the experience. Maybe that's guilt. Maybe that's shame. Maybe you feel embarrassed because here I am again trying for this thing again. But I think the only time those emotions show up for real is if you quit. If you quit every single day that you wake up is a chance to try again. Every single day is a chance to do better. Why do you assume that you would already know how to do something you've never done? And maybe you're like, no, Rachel, I've tried this diet a million times. Like I've done this workout regime a million times. I know how to do it. No, you don't. Because if you actually knew how to do it in a way that works for you, in a way that works for you organically and that can stick, If you knew how to do that, then you would already be across the finish line. And here's the thing about achieving anything. It's a catch-22. Because in order to know that you can achieve it, you actually have to achieve it. But in order to feel motivated to get to the achievement piece, you want sort of justification, right? You want to know that this is all going to work out. And that's just not how it is when we're pursuing something difficult or something worthwhile. One of my mentors used to always tell me that everything great was uphill. Every single great thing is at the top of a mountain. In fact, it's one way to know whether or not you're evolving as a person is does life feel like you're trying to get to the next place or does it feel like you're sliding down kind of out of control and don't really know what's going on it's usually a good sign that maybe maybe you should rethink the direction that you're heading and i know it's way easier to slide downhill than it is to climb the mountain but everything you want everything good is up there at the top So rather than trying to convince yourself that you've got this, when in your heart of hearts, you're not really sure that you do, 
why don't you look for other examples in your personal history where you did figure out the hard thing? Look for examples where something was really difficult, but you kept showing up because you felt like you had to or because the reward on the other side of that thing was so great that you stuck with it. The very first time that I got behind the wheel of a car, I was terrified. And for months and months and months, as I was going through driver's training, I was so scared that I was going to run into somebody, that I was going to get hit, that I was going to hurt someone else. I feel like we all sort of have our version of like, holy crap, I'm the one driving this car. This is wild. Also a great analogy for life. But my point is, I stuck with it, even though I was afraid, because I wanted the freedom that came with having a driver's license. When I had my first baby, I had no freaking clue what I was doing. I can't believe that they just like at the hospital, they're like, here's your baby, and then you're supposed to keep the baby alive. It's it's wild. But because it was so important, I stuck with it. I figured out how to change diapers and breastfeed through bleeding crack nipples and do all the things. You have something in your life, probably many things, if you take the time to give yourself some credit. You've got some stuff back there that you're like, you know what? I've never crossed the finish line at a marathon, but I made it through 52 hours of labor. I'm speaking from personal experience. When I was on you know, mile 19, 20, 21 of my first marathon and I thought I was going to die, I just kept thinking, man, if you could be in labor for two days, you can sure as hell finish this race. So you might not have an exact example of what you're trying to do, but you've got something that proves you are strong enough. Go again, go again, go again, go again. If you've broken a promise to yourself, or as Rumi says, if you've broken your vow a thousand times, show up a thousand and one.